Hey everybody, welcome to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, and this is the fifth episode in my fourth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy series. At the end of the last episode, I asked you guys uh, what you thought about this goblin city here, whether I should make peace with them to get on the goblin's good side, as their units are useful underground, or declare war for more evil points, which I kind of need, or am going to need. This led to a really good discussion in the comments, I thought, with a lot of good ideas on both sides, and in the end, a lot of you had completely different ideas, some I hadn't even thought of, and I just wanted to talk about that for a second. Um, Arch Redbeard was the first comment that I read about this, and he said he opted for war, uh, just so I could get evil points now and because another AI will likely attack this city before I get there anyway, which would waste gold if I paid for peace. Um, so, like, if I made peace with them and then another AI came down from this area because this is kind of far away from anything that, you know, I have. I mean, there's there's seven other computers on this map, so there's like a really good chance somebody is closer to that city than I am and they'll get there first. So if I pay money for peace and then somebody comes in and take them, then all I get out of that is the race governance and I wouldn't have any goblin cities to go along with it. So that would obviously be a problem. So it'd be a little bit of a gamble going for peace. Um, CMCK suggested peace because if I change my mind I can declare war later and still get the same amount of evil alignment. Um, some gold would be wasted, but it would allow me to vassal them later if no enemy AI interfere, which would get me gold in return. If I made them a vassal, I would be getting gold back from them. So there's that argument too. Um, the, I guess, one problem with that is that if I'm going to make peace with them now, I probably wouldn't declare war later, because that would just be throwing away the money that I put into it, I think. Um, so I would probably just go all out for peace or for war, and, and not try to go halfway in between. Um, Tarsac suggested that I don't actually need to make a decision now. I could remain neutral and open up my options. I don't really need evil points until Embrace Darkness is researched, and I can always declare war later. Uh, the risk, I think, with this is that if the city gets conquered or absorbed by the enemy AI, um, I wouldn't be able to do anything with it, whether declare war or make peace. So I wouldn't get race governance, I wouldn't get evil points, I would get nothing. It would just be a very neutral outcome. So, um, and on the other hand, if I, or in addition, if I did that and just remained at peace with them, and then decided that I wanted to vassal them later, I would have kind of wasted all those turns where they were just sitting around doing nothing. So I don't know if I want to do that either. I kind of want to make a decision now, whether peace or war. But still a good idea, though. I hadn't really even considered the option of just not doing anything and making a maybe more informed decision later. Arvid Nelson reminded me that there are going to be plenty of other independents above ground of other races to declare war on. Um, the risk with that is that exploring above ground... If I wanted to like go above ground, for example, and make war with a bunch of people, um, and then use that to get evil points while making peace with the goblins. I could do that. It's a little bit of a risk because if I did do that, then I would be opening myself up to meeting other AI and possibly um, having them come after me or declare war on me. Um, or I've just drunk my spells and stuff like that. Um, I just kind of wanted to not meet too many of them yet, but on the other hand, I can't stay hidden underground forever. So that's an option. Um, just exploring, finding other cities, and declaring war on many, as many non-goblin, non-dwarf cities as I could find, which there will be more of them above ground. I think underground it's primarily just goblins, dwarves, orcs, and tigrans that spawn that I'm aware of. Um, so that is one option. And then the last I saw or was reading through was that Kenneth Larson suggested declaring war now and then casting Seed of Distrust to prevent other computers from absorbing them um, which is, I think, a great idea. I hadn't considered using that spell. I often don't use that spell. It kind of goes unnoticed, but Seed of Distrust is right here, and it uh, prevents any player from advancing their diplomatic state with the target independent city as long as it is active. That's a great idea, but the one problem with that is that I don't have it researched, and it would take me four turns, and I don't want to wait that long. I think all things considered, with all of the comments I've been taking them all into account, I think I'm going to side with Arch Redbeard on this one and go ahead and declare war. The reason I'm going to do that is if I make peace and somebody else invades them, then my race governance with the goblins that I would get from buying them, plus the money that I spent on them, would get wasted. And I'm kind of thinking that will probably happen. I think somebody will get to them first. 
Um, on the other hand, if I declare war on them but do manage to get over there and capture them, I can then like produce a goblin settler and build a city or migrate other th cities to goblins to make them happy with me again. So I can get that bonus back up. In addition, if I'm taking other cities that I find underground, like say Orcs and Theocrat, or Orcs and not Theocrat, if I take Orc and um, Tigran cities underground and migrate them to goblins, I get evil points for doing that too. So that maximizes my evil points while still hopefully maintaining a good relationship with the goblins in the long run. And then regardless of what the computers do, I think I get a good deal out of it. Because if the computers do attack them, then oh well, I lost goblin race governance, but I don't have goblins anyway yet, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm sorry for the lengthy discussion there, there was a lot to go over, but I thought it's really interesting in this game how even a simple decision like this can carry so much weight and that there's so many factors to consider. But having said all of that, we're going to go ahead and declare war on these people. That's going to lose me 50 alignment, minus 150 relation, minus 100 race happiness with the goblins. That's okay. Now I need to get this dwarf out of here. I think that, um, well actually let's go ahead and run up. Let me grab run up and grab these haste berries here. And I want to grab that gold. I think the lost souls are going to catch up with him, but the gold is worth it. Oh, there's an enchanting tree out here, or an enchanted tree. I wonder what's above it. I've been looking for one of those. Unfortunately, I don't really have I could make really good dwarf deep guards in this city. This would be fantastic. That combined with this would be outstanding if I were a warlord and could make dwarf phalanxes. This isn't a bad spot for a city in general though. And I think in the comments I told Arch Redbeard that there weren't a lot of good cities around me. A, good, a lot of good city spots that I had noticed. There really are. Um, like this area in here would be pretty good I think. And this area over here, like I just pointed out, might be okay. If I can find a dungeon, like up here somewhere near that enchanted tree, I might lose my mind, because that would be amazing for Firstborns. Um, but yeah, there are places I could expand. So I think his suggestion that I build uh, settlers is probably a good one. I kind of want to get some of these engineers out now, though, just to make sure that um, I'm getting them leveled up so they have emergency repair. The only other comment that I wanted to mention was with regard to my druid, Arch Redbeard, or not Arch Redbeard, uh, Mr. Sorrybot had a fantastic suggestion for this guy. Mentioned that I should probably get Awakened Spirit and um, Savage Rage. I might want to invest in those, go ahead and spend the points on it, because it will help my animals level up faster because I'm buffing them so they can do more damage and kill more things. But it will also give points for my druid because while he's casting those spells or using those abilities you know he's getting level up points too so I think it benefits that whole group quite a bit and I will go ahead and do that I think the next time that guy levels up so having said all of that I think I can continue along I kind of almost want to double back these guys and go up north to see if there's a dungeon up there somewhere but I think instead what I'm going to do is slowly send this drone over that way Hopefully I can avoid the hostiles in a seal here and get it over there so it can explore. Because there's like rivers and lava around. I don't really want to get my dwarf trapped behind those lost souls, so I'm going to keep him going. My best bet in terms of getting more evil points is to meet more cities, particularly Tigrans and Orcs, which I'm perfectly happy with picking on, and declaring war on them as soon as I can. Alright, and I'm at war with them, so I don't need to talk to them anymore. All right, I have a decent sized battle here. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. I think I was waiting till this episode did. Oh, wait, no, no, that's right. I was going to bring up that engineer. That's why I was waiting so he can get in on the action, too. All right, so they'll wait. Uh, this spy drone, this spy drone should probably continue northward. Um, I, I almost want to send him here and go above ground and start looking for other cities. But I think I'm just as likely to find cities underground. They are more likely to be dwarf or goblin, which I don't want to declare war on. But, at least not a lot. But, um, I don't know. Going above ground, the drone will explore more efficiently, though. I was kind of looking around here to see what I could find. 
you know, my druid's army is kind of going this direction anyway, and I might just kind of keep going with them and use them to explore. So maybe this guy would be better off going above ground. I could certainly use, you know, like finding new cities to declare war on. Maybe there's still a chance I get primeval if the computers aren't gunning for it too hard. I think I'll send him up there. All right, I don't have... Well, I do probably need to cast a spell on this turn. I don't know... I could start casting mana fuel cells, but I wonder if I can leave it active and then the next turn, no, I don't think I can do that. I was wondering if I could leave this active and then like the next turn cast it for free. I mean, I could try it. Um, let's see what other spells I've got. I could summon another spy drone. That might not be a bad idea. In fact, that is probably what I'll do. No, I'll wait, and I'll get mana fuel cells on this city on the next turn, and then just boost its production like crazy so it can build up really fast. There's a, like, it's going to have the production from that. Um, yeah, I think that city would probably be better off having mana fuel cells right away. And then maybe I'll get some more spy drones later on. Maybe summon one by this druid's army once he's moved up here a little more so he can explore this way, and the spy drone can, like, go up there, I guess. So I'm kind of curious to see if I can cast mana fuel cells if I start it on this turn, if I'll have my casting points on the next turn left over. I don't think it works that way. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still going to use up all my casting points on this next turn, but we'll find out. It does cost quite a bit of upkeep, so I'm going to be losing mana again a little bit, but I don't really mind that too much. Because uh, I think I can get more pretty quickly. If nothing else, the city could build a shrine in like probably close to one turn with all the production it'll have. Maybe two, if it's a brand new city. But I think that um, in the long run, that's probably still probably a better idea to get this city up and running really fast if I can. Sort of tempted to put a little city out here, but. I don't really know that it would do me a whole lot of good. There's really nothing else out there, and I think it'd be a waste of a settler. I'd be much better off sending stuff out east, I think. On that note, that's where my king's army is going to end up going, I think. Unless this spy drone finds some really good stuff up here, my king's army is going to start heading towards that goblin city. And this is happening again, so let's go ahead and just get this over with. Always a good time. Okay, brand new dwarf city. Uh, and that got me some more mana too, so mana's good for now. Um, let's go ahead and cast this and see what happens to my channeling points. It did work. Okay, so as you can see, because I started casting that on the last turn, I get to keep my casting points for this turn. Cool. I don't know if I really needed it on that city or not, but I think an early city like this could really benefit from that. The Builder's Hall costs 100 production, 100 gold, so once I clear this, I'll be able to get that in two turns, boosting production even further, which will then, I think, allow me to make a shrine in one turn. Let's do that. Alright, I want to get this engineer up here, join my king. Um, the spy drone is going up. Let's go ahead and send him up. I want to look around for primarily independent cities. I kind of want to stay away from where the computers probably are, because I don't want to meet too many of them yet. So I'll explore my own little corner of this map down here. Make sure nobody's right above me or anything like that. And I did get Produce Musketman, so that's pretty cool. Produce Golem comes next. I think I'm going to stop here and get Embrace Darkness instead, because I'm probably going to want that soon. On that note, I actually might want to get Invention. I think I'm going to pick up Invention. I want a little extra casting points. With all the mana income I've had, I think I could use it. Alright, and what am I doing in my throne? Okay, I can make the Dwarf Musketeer, but that's going to take two turns, whereas the Engineer will take only one. The Musketeer is 100 production. 
So for that, a master or siege workshop will give me the extra boost I need. Um, I'm wondering if there might be a better solution here. If I could bump the city's happiness up a little bit more, I think it has to be... Uh, is it cheerful? I, I, I don't remember when it becomes cheerful. I wanted to say it's in 200 increments of 200. So I think it would be 400, but I might be wrong about that. I'll just go ahead and grab the Siege Workshop. And then I can then I'm guaranteed to be able to make Musketmen in one turn. I want to get a bunch of them built early. Um, but I also need a Settler. I, I, I want to get a Settler heading out this way. ASAP. And my King's Army can kind of lead it out there. Let's see what this drone finds. If there's maybe a potential good spot to settle over here. Uh, he's just finding a lot of lava so far. Um, I think that's all rock walls down there. No, there's a road going that way. I wonder where that goes. Well, he's gonna find out. Okay. Once the city grows, it'll have enough to make musketeers in one turn for sure. Uh, the settler is going to take three. That's 275 production. And it's going to knock down the population a bit. You know, I think I'm going to want... I, I really need more cities. I think I'm going to go ahead and, and make one. Oh, no, that drops it down to four. I don't want to waste that turn. Okay, I'll go ahead and grab the siege workshop. We'll get that first, and then I have lots of options. Okay, I already know that grew into a town. Oh, those were updates from when I shrunk it and then regrew it. All right, let's get this battle done. Let's go ahead and kill these guys. There's a lot of shock troopers in here. This could be interesting. Right at me. All right. Uh, I might lose a couple units here, so people might get chopped up. We'll see. But I really would love to run up and shoot those razor bows, but I don't really feel like having my king get annihilated right at the beginning here. So I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, instead, what I think I will do. Let's probably use that deep guard on defense. How, what's the range on this flashbang? Pretty good. Orcs don't have great resistance, so I can probably kind of neutralize that archer with a flashbang. I don't have to worry about units coming from this way. Uh, get a little bit closer, maybe? I think from right here he could reach him. Okay, cool. They're blinded, so I don't need to worry about them. Well, I mean, they'll run up close, but... Honestly, they're orcs. Uh, they might actually do more damage in melee combat, but that's alright. I, I think I'd still rather have them come running up to me. Uh, my king has a ton of defense, so what I might actually do is use my king as a wall here. It's a little risky because these guys can break guard. Actually, that's a lot risky because those guys can break guard. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take that chance. We will sacrifice the deep guard if necessary. And I'm going to leave my king back. And probably have this guy buff. I'm going to go ahead and buff that deep guard right there for some extra damage output since that's the only unit that great sword can reach. I might, I uh, will probably buff the boar rider too to get some extra charge damage. I know I should probably be using this to heal, but they'll have time to heal between turns. I just want to have the extra fire damage output right off the bat because orcs are vulnerable to fire. And I want to leave him here so that he has a chance to charge. I want to take advantage of that charge ability. Uh, as for these guys, I don't really see a reason to not turn around and shoot the Impalers. 
Everybody else needs to run. Like, run, 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 because that... Those guys are coming. Um, I wonder if I can run and still hit the crossbows. I figured that guy could move one, two, three, four, five spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. I could get there. My crossbows would be safe here. So I may as well shoot the impaler again. See, now I'm kind of wishing I still had my king because I could finish that impaler off at no threat to the crossbow. Uh, what I might do is move this crossbow. I wonder if he could kill that impaler from back here. Not quite. No good options there for finishing it off. It's going to get in my crossbow's face, which is unfortunate. I might have used the engineer if I'd have thought about that. I could always run up and defensive strike it, but I feel like that basically leaves everyone a bit vulnerable. As it is right now, that guy can't hit anybody. The worst he can do is run up and attack the crossbow, so I think I'll take my chances with that. And leave this guy back here, probably. I'm going to move him slightly this way in case he needs to go over there. I think everybody else is in good position, so we'll see what the orcs have to bring to the table here. Okay. I like that extra damage. Alright. Good, the crossbows just straight up finished him off. Now I'm wondering how much damage they could do to that shock trooper. Probably not enough. I think I'm going to err on the side of caution here. Let him run in and hit the deep or hit my uh hit these guys on defense. Probably leave him there so he would have to run past them if he wanted to go after the crossbow. And I guess the rest could plink at him, although I'm not sure if I want them to. You know what, they could handle one hit from a shock trooper. I'll take the extra damage and see what they do. If they want to take a free hit from my axemen as they run by, that's fine with me. Um, these guys are out of movement, so they actually can't hit anybody. I probably should have moved them a bit differently. Alright, I can kill several of these guys. I'm thinking about going just ham on that shock trooper and trying to kill him as fast as I can. I need these razor bows out of the way so the forge priest can nuke them with fire. I might do that with a defensive strike. That would do the trick. That gives me this option. I'm going to do as much damage to them up front as I can. Unfortunately, I don't really have quite the right angle for this blunderbuss to do what I want it to do. I would like to be able to hit just those two units with it, but I don't think I'm going to have that luxury. Instead, I think I'm going to have to settle for something like this. My king's got the pistol, so that could be useful. I also could use black bolts. They won't like that. Or I could give stone skin to these guys and just charge in, use up his action points. Oh wait, nope, they've got tireless. That's not really an option. How much damage would he do? Ooh, not a lot. Not much at all. The gun would still be a better option. And that is the option I will take. The problem is that other shock trooper hanging back there. Alright, here's what I'm gonna do. 19 damage. Not quite enough. I'm gonna need some help from the other crossbow. Okay, that will be enough. Okay, now he's down, and I didn't take any damage on those guys. 
these great swords can't really move. The deep guard might be in a bit of trouble. He might go down. about this guy over here. These units can't really handle him very well. Okay, that guy just defended. The archers just defended. Alright, I'm fine over here. They are, they are all good. It's now this side that's in a bit of trouble. The nice thing about dwarf crossbows is that they're good at running around and getting flank attacks and still doing full damage. So I actually might be okay down here. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. I'm good. <laughs> Alright, then these last few guys should be relatively easy to kill because that shock trooper has now let his guard down. I'm probably going to use my king to try to flank around behind and turn him around just to get some extra damage bonuses. I don't think I have any other unit that's in a good position to do that. Yep, my king it is. Kind of wish he still had his gun. You know what, I, I took down the other shock trooper with relatively little trouble. I think I can handle this one, too. Yeah, he's going down. That won't take too much. And I can still get a flank attack on him here. Give the XP to those deep guards. I think they deserve it for taking all that punishment. Alright, that's a lot of dead orc shock troopers and no dead dwarves, so pretty good outcome for me. Ooh, there's some decent items in here. Especially for a dreadnought, if I want to turn him into a kind of a melee tank. Oh yeah, that's a lot better than an item that gives backstab. Might send that off to the druid. Oh yeah, his defense is at 16 now. Cool. I love massing defense on dreadnoughts. You can just make them absolute tanks. It's so much fun. Yeah, he could use them. Uh, he could use this, I guess. Probably give it to my next hero as soon as it shows up. All right, now this city can build the Builder's Hall in two turns. So they are good. I don't know. I forget what's in there. I kind of want to leave these guys together keep the engineer with me. Unfortunately, he's kind of slowing everybody down a little bit. Well, he is a dwarf, so they can move a little further. Um, I'm wondering what is in there. Let's actually scout that out with a boar rider first. Mm. It's a couple. That's a lot of tier 3 units. I don't know about that one. I would really like to clear that, though. No. No. It's not I'm not ready for that yet. I don't want to lose units on that structure. This city's borders won't be able to reach it for a little bit yet. It's going to take some time to grow. So I don't really see the point of throwing units away on that. I kind of need them for this upcoming dragon battle and I need them as strong as possible to clear structures heading east as I move towards the goblins. That should probably be the top priority. Although it could be a while before I get anyone back here again though. At least Tigrans don't have fire resistance. I keep thinking that they do, even though I know that they don't. Well, okay, the Sphinxes do, so that doesn't really bode well for me. I will definitely use units if I try this. Lose units if I try this. I just don't think I can spare them yet. I'll have more powerful stuff later. We're going to pass this one by for now. All right, up to the Druid's army. I can take a peek and see what's in that dungeon, but I'm pretty sure I don't want to go in there yet either. 
who's got the most movement? Well, actually, it's probably the druid on horseback, I suppose. Oh, wait, no, I was going to clear this structure. I don't want to forget about the one I'm standing on. Um, we'll probably... Well, let's take another peek in here and see what I'm up against. A lot of wizards, monster hunters. This is going to be a reasonably tough battle. But this is one I want to go ahead and do now. Because I really need XP. The problem is that I'm afraid of losing some of these guys. You know, I'm going to need to come back here for the dungeon anyway. I would really rather wait until each of these animals evolves. Once they evolve, I think that battle would be better. But I've got too much riding on these two to risk losing them in a tough battle like this. We'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait on that. I am going to split the Axemen off from this group. Add the Boar Rider. And then have the others just kind of tag along. Alright, I would like to go over there and get rid of that. This should be an easy battle and a good opportunity to get some XP for my snakes. the spider, but I want to forget the spider too. Oh, oh I'm glad he resisted incri inflict crippling. Actually, it doesn't really matter, because that guy is probably going to die here in a second. Druid is just outside of their range. Alright, I really need to think about maximizing XP in this one. How much damage would you do in a melee attack? I'm, I want to run these guys here and shoot them, but I don't have a way of stopping these guys from counterattacking. One, two, three. That's not quite enough. Alright, we're going to back everybody up, keep everyone together. I actually don't even really want these guys killing anything. The only units that I really want to kill anything here are my druid and the two animals. Yeah, so I'm going to play it slow here and let them come to me. Um, I kind of want to give... I'm going to give Guardian Flame to the snake, I think. I think that'd be fun. We'll uh, maybe wait until they've come in and launched their next attack. Oh, I should have put the spider up closer to the front. Okay. I want to shoot up my hero. Tempted to run back out there and go after that guy again because he's being a pest, but I'll stick to the plan. Alright, I want the spider to try to web somebody. That's probably the best opening move here. Okay, cool. Spider gains level. And I want... I want the snake to go flank those guys, I think. Actually, I think I want the snake to just go straight up to them and, and hit them. And then have... Then I'll have this guy come behind and heal them. Okay, that's fine. Um, you can now go buff the snakes... And then you, I think, should probably run in and finish him off, because I do still need XP for this guy. Actually, why would I do that when I can simply do this? And you guys can keep running, as long as you're not crippled. Okay, that looks good. The spider can finish them off, or the snake, either one. So the spider can only level up once per battle, but it's still got some XP it could gain towards the next level. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move the spider probably here. I'm going to let the snake go after these guys. 
move the spider up here and try to take away their movement. Because they can still sprint. The spider will be okay on defense. They're not going to kill it. And I got the healing ability with my king, but I don't, or my hero, but I don't want to use it yet. Instead, I think I'll just, like, take a lousy shot at these guys for a little bit of XP. And to soften them up a bit for the spiders. They'll sprint, and they'll probably go after my hero. No, they're going after the snakes. Okay, well now either one of those can kill them. Uh, the spider could web them again. There's not a lot of reason for it to, though. Alright, here's what I think I want to do. Give the snake nourishing meal. Send him over there to end that guy's day. Let's spread this out, actually. We'll, we'll let the snake hit once, take one hit in retaliation. That boosts them up to 32 XP. Spiders can then finish them off. Alright, that worked out pretty well for everybody. I got two levels for each animal. That's kind of what I need to be doing with this army here. Um, they're still a long ways from where I need them to be, but they're getting there. Alright, and then I can go ahead and, and I, can, I should be able to take this out, no problem. Just a couple death ringers or animators. Yeah, I'm good. No more lost souls. Getting tired of all this stuff. All right. Uh, there's a couple people that need healing. I think it's primarily the animals. We'll use the snakes as the attackers again. Right, I don't think they're gonna come out after me, so I'm probably gonna have to start this party. way to do that than by shooting a lost soul with a holy bow. It's a level for my hero, so that's, that's pretty good. I'm going to move, I'm going to keep these guys over on the side and probably block them behind the crossbowman, or behind the axeman. And get the animals up closer to the front. Boar rider on the flank, and I think we're good to go. out for those Deathbringers, because they can teleport and then flank. And this guy's a little beat up. I need to make sure I keep him alive. No risking it with that hero. Especially since I can't revive him yet. I'm going to put him behind the line here. In fact, I'm going to put all these guys behind the line. Something like that. Make sure I turn him around. Might back him up even a little more because that Deathbringer's coming. Just to be on the safe side. Heal myself and let them come to me. Okay, good. I was hoping those Deathbringers would do something here. Now I can get rid of them. And I'm probably going to need this guy's help to do it. Um, 
I don't know. I can probably actually get him with my king. I just need to make sure I kill all the reanimators. It's minus sight penalty. How much better? I can do a ton of damage to that thing. I think the bow does more overall, so do that. Didn't quite kill him, but any of those animals could. Problem is, everyone else is kind of in the way. And I need to make sure I kill all of them because that poison damage is too dangerous to that hero. I don't want to take any chances there. Um, the spiders have a chance of webbing anything back there, so I really need to get... Alright, here's what I'm going to do. I'll just take that hit. Oh, they're cool cursed. It doesn't really matter. I'll take that hit and nuke that guy. Maybe, maybe not. Alright. I'm going to stick with that plan. That opens up routes for these guys. Their melee attack does some poison damage, not a lot. I could try, um, what I'm thinking about doing is going behind and trying to web that reanimator in the back, but if that goes wrong, I could be risking losing my spiders. So I think I'm gonna take the safe option here because the snakes could still reach the other guy open enough. Alright, I'm gonna do this. Web that one. Okay. Then I can go around with this guy, get in his face. That uses up some of his movement, so he's not a threat to the king anymore. And really isn't a threat to these snakes now, because they can just run up and do that. Alright, I think I'm good. And then this group over here is just going to have to deal with that lost soul. There's no getting around that, so go ahead. That's kind of a waste of defensive strike, but yeah, why not? Now that lost soul is going to get back up. I did forget about him over there. So I need to probably move into a position where I can deal with it. And you could shoot him. This will soften him up a bit. I think I'm good otherwise. Go on defense. Yeah, that's everybody. Right, so hopefully between him and the reanimator, it's... Oh, the reanimator's just going to heal. Okay, that's fine. That's good news for me. Okay, now it's just a feast day for the animals. Goblin Reanimator will resist any blight damage that this does. Wait, though the reanimators are undead, they're all gonna resist the blight damage. Derp. Okay. Why don't you just get a whole ton of XP attacking him? The king can finish him off. And these guys can go easily deal with this. Get another level. Perfect. Yes, the animals have all moved, so let's do them over here. Okay, so I mean, apologies that those battles took such a long time, but kind of needed to make sure I did that right. Um, absolutely not. Am I going to give up that quiver? That shield can go to the dreadnought. Alright, and this guy did level up, so I can do one of two things here. I can get Savage Rage, or I could get Awakened Spirit. Both of them, I think, would be great options, uh, given what Mr. Sorrybot said. But Savage Rage is overall more powerful. 
Units gain charge, first strike, plus five strength, armor piercing, overwhelm, and wall crushing until the end of combat. That gives me a lot of options for what I can do with my units. First strike is great for defense, charge is great for offense, the plus five damage is great no matter what they're doing. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Besides, I do have the casting points to use it now. And to use it on both of them for that matter. So I need to remember to start casting that at the beginning of every battle. The rest of these units are pretty much done moving, so I'll have to wait here. Hopefully that next group comes after, comes down and is dumb enough to attack me. And this guy can continue to flee for his miserable little life. There's another enchanting tree. All right. Please be a dungeon somewhere nearby, anywhere. Not sure what to do with this guy other than I guess tag along with my team, my king's group. And there's no spells I need to be casting right now. I guess, well, probably some in spy drone. Yeah, I'd like to get one more of those out somewhere in this area. Even if it can't see that far underground, I think it'd still be a good idea. And I've got the mana for it, so I may as well. Alright, I'll go ahead and skip ahead so you guys don't have to sit here through it cycling through the turns. Okay. I actually didn't get attacked by lost souls in the middle of all that. Hey, another hero join offer. That's good. And the lost souls are actually not following these guys, so that's also good. Maybe I finally lost them. There's another cave here, Forbidden Sanctum. No dungeon that I'm seeing. May as well pop up here and see what I find. At least just to mark that location. If there's a dungeon down here, it might work. If not, I might go up there. Draconian Theocrat. How about show me your talents? He has Bestow Iron Heart. That's not bad. Not bad to start with. Can always use the healing. They're kind of neutral about being underground. I do really like Theocrat heroes. I think I'm going to take him. I've got the gold for it too, so I could use a Theocrat to lead the second army here that I'm kind of piecing together. And I like how they get that extra spirit damage for their army. That's really nice to have. Alright, I can go ahead and summon this. I'm probably going to wait until these guys are a little more northward. So I can summon it and send it across the bridge. So maybe like... Maybe like here. Something like this. Okay, that is something that spawns bad guys. Their necromancer circle. No wonder there's so many lost souls out here. Probably have to go after that as soon as I'm done going after this. That battle's gonna be tough too. You know, that snake's actually pretty close. Yeah, that snake's really close to leveling up. I think I'll send this army actually out here first, take care of this these easier battles, and then come back when the snake is a uh, shock serpent that could actually stun things. I wish I knew where those bandits went, though. If they ran back towards my other cities, that could be a problem. I actually really probably need to scout that if they kept going down that road. Although, on the other hand, that is vassals over there. Still, I need to know if they ran past. Alright, I think I'm in the clear. Alright, we'll uh, hold off on attacking that, because that battle is going to be so stinking tough. 
and try to get my snake leveled up over here first. Um, I wanted to get them together, but I can't actually join everyone together. Yeah, this will be close enough. It should be all right there. And far enough away from other things that may or may not want to kill them. Um, let's see, for this guy, Aura of, Resi Aura of Resistance is always good too. In fact, I'm going to pick that up and Sacred Arms. Just get them both right away. That'll turn an army of random dwarf axemen into something actually decently tough. Let's see what else. I'll throw out some hit points for him. Get that up to a respectable level. Uh, these guys are going to probably have to meet up. I don't know if I can get him with that army yet because he's going to be slowed down a bit. And I don't want to waste time going after those dragons, so... My king's army will grab the lucky clover field and just move, move in. And this other army will follow. Actually, how far can these guys get? Not any further than that. Alright, then this will work, just in case those dragons come rushing out at me. Do I want to send him out and around, or have him join up through that mountain pass once the dragons are dead? That's a tough call. I'll leave him here for now. Because they're going straight east as soon as they're done with those dragons. Alright, I forgot about this guy up here, so I can keep poking around and see what I find. Ah, oh, there is another city down there. Might be an opportunity to declare war on somebody. It's like a little cave in here with nothing in it. I'll follow the road north, because I don't want to go south. That boneyard is there. It's something else my king's army is going to have to deal with. Alright, I need to find a new spot to dig. And I don't want to dig out too many places like I was talking about before. Because those dirt walls are good for dwarf cities. Maybe now would be a good time to actually start connecting some cities with roads. That was mentioned to me in the comments as well. I apologize, I don't recall the name of the person who mentioned it. Um, it might have been Tufik Abbas, actually, but I it might not be a bad idea to start connecting some stuff with roads for when I eventually have machines, which could take advantage of them. Right now, cave crawling for the dwarves is helping me out, but I don't know. I'll send him back down here, because there also might be some area I could dig in here and get away with it, so go do that. Alright, let's move on over to the next turn and see what happens here. Okay, to the next turn here. Um, we, and I didn't get attacked by Lost Souls again, so I'm actually kind of thrilled about that. I want to keep scouting with this guy. There's some gold down here. So let's grab that. And the path kind of seems to lead this way, so we'll keep going. Oh, I can't keep going. That inn is right in the way. There's another enchanting tree over here. These are also far away from me, though. It's kind of unfortunate. Well, I'll find out if there's anything good near them eventually. Um, I think what I'm going to do with this guy is scout down a little further, just to fill some of this in. Let's see, he moves three every turn, I think. Sixteen. Okay, so that would maybe space to move five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I can't go any further that direction, so I may as well just grab this and head back up. Don't really know how haste berries work on a drone, but best not to ask too many questions, I guess. Uh, absolutely not. I will not make peace with the Naga. That would be just throwing away evil points that I kind of really need. 
Okay, Invention 1 is Research. That will allow me to cast Embrace Darkness in two turns rather than three. So in a pinch I can get it quicker. I wonder if uh, Suppress Nature would be good. I don't really need it yet. Maybe later in the game if I wind up in territory that I don't like. Solid Engineering. Armored and Machine Units all get plus one defense. That's tempting too, because almost, you know, I'll grab that. I think the extra defense is worth three turns of research, since it would apply to all of my units. Alright, and got a shield for this guy too, which turns him even into even more of a tank. I think I'm ready to fight those dragons. Um, I don't know if I want to do that in this episode or the next one. Actually, you know what? I don't really feel... I feel like I took the first few turns of this episode really slow to explain stuff. So I feel like I should probably get a little more action in here. So we'll go ahead and slay the dragons here. Let's uh, get... Uh, he can't join, unfortunately. But everyone else can, so... Let's get this party started. Actually kind of moved them in a dumb way, because these units have less movement overall. Oh well, the Theocrat needs time to catch up. Alright. King has more movement than everybody, so this is a very likely victory. Still need to take it seriously. It is a dragon after all. And can do stuff like that. Alright, it's going to have fire weakness, because it is a frost dragon. Well, why don't you just go sit there? Or even better, I, I think he could just attack it. Not sure how much damage the other one would do, but he has a polearm unit, so they don't really threaten him very much. It takes away some movement, less options. Then my king can run up here and let's see, let's get the boar rider up front. King runs up, Black Bolts, it doesn't like that, although it doesn't really, actually really doesn't seem to care much. I want to save the Blunderbuss for the Dragon. Fire Bolts probably isn't a bad idea to use on that guy. And this is better than nothing, I suppose. I don't think that dragon can... Ooh, he's closer than I thought, but no, he can't quite reach them. Could finish it off with the blunderbuss, but I'm saving it. Or maybe I could finish it off with a... Oh, I could finish it off with this guy. Because he's safe behind that fence. Well, actually, the dragon wouldn't be able to reach him there from there anyway. Okay, that's fine. Let's get everyone else out of there. And let that dragon come over to me. And we'll see what happens. I can't use that breath attack again for another couple turns. Man, that's exactly where I didn't want him to go. Oh, hi. How much longer before I can frost breath again? Next turn. Hmm. Well, he's gonna nuke a bunch of people if I don't do something. Does frost breath take... Well, Frost Breath doesn't even take three action points anyway, so I need to uh, let's, I need to spread my units out and lure him into where everybody else is. I'm probably going to lose somebody to Frost Breath here. I don't know that that can really be avoided. So I just don't have enough stuff to go out there and hit him right now. Other than trying to take away his action points, which I can't really do. I don't have enough out there. Alright, I'm just going to split everybody up, particularly the weak units. I need them in completely different places. Like you go there, 
and these guys will go here. I need to start moving other units in this direction. Alright, and I really want... Okay, I'll just take, take him down with those guys. Worried about those boar. And I'm gonna back them up a bit. I would love to give guarded by flames to like you know what, I think I will do that. Give guarded by flames to my king. And use him to hit, actually hit the dragon. It has fearsome, but with enough other units around, I should be okay. Or I could give it to this guy. Probably won't save him from a breath attack, but... You know what? Nope. If he goes down, he goes down. Ooh. That dragon can flank my king won't kill it, but I'm going to want a lot of stuff up there to deal with that in case it tries it. Alright, so at most he should only be able to kill one thing here. So it can take its pick. Yep, everybody's about as spread out as good as they can get, I think. I hope. All right, he is going for the... No, he's just attacking the crossbow. Just eat him alive. All right. Maybe it couldn't use Frost Breath on that turn. Because I think it would have if it could have. Well, now I've got plenty of options for dealing with this thing. I can start by turning it around. Now, he's got panicked, so I'm going to want to make sure... Or he could panic my king. So I'm going to want to make sure that... Uh, I get in a good hit here. If I went one, two, three, and then the fourth would be the charge. They've still got their defensive strike option. Gonna make use of that. One, two, three. Risky. Going for it. Okay, at least he resisted Fearsome. Probably gonna have to try to use up its action points. Might even have to suicide somebody into it to do that. Did that eat my other dwarf engineer? I think it did. I was thinking that was a crossbow I had. No, no, he's down there. He can't do a whole lot of anything from there. He doesn't threaten my king as long as he only hits him once. I need to make a path for these axemen to get up and defensive strike that thing. And that seems like a job for the deep guard. I will take the flank with this hit. I want to think about how I position these guys. Alright, that's okay. I'm gonna defensive strike. He'll retaliate. I got lucky. Nice. Okay, he's got one bite left, which could basically take out that Axeman if he wanted to. It would be nice if I could save him. I don't think I can. Blunderbuss aims like that. It's not really a safe way to do that. Not without hitting my king or a different unit. So, I'm not going to do that. I 
will shoot as much fire as possible at him. It's time to say goodbye to that dwarf axeman. He served me well. And I'll be replacing him with musketmen, so it's not all bad. Oh, he survived! I'm impressed. I thought he was dead. Alright, cool. Well, congratulations and all that. Um, I guess the only thing that's left is to kill him. I don't think I can suck any more XP out of this very easily. Yep. We will give the honor to my king. Cool. All right. That's one dragon down and only lost one crossbow out of all that, I think. Yep. Not bad. I get a crossbow back and a boar rider, plus decent sandals. And also can have them join my empire right now which is probably a good idea. Especially, I got this big army here. I should be able to clear some of these structures. In fact, I should be able to clear pretty much everything in here. I'm gonna take that, I'll accept that. It is time to welcome them into my glorious kingdom and help them clear out the rest of this stuff. Let's see who those sandals should go to before I forget that they're there, and then I probably need to wrap this one up. Um, I'm sending him to the druid. He can use all the help he can get. And I did get five casting points. Not sure what I want to use them on yet. I'll have to th think about that a little bit, I, I suppose. I, I am kind of wanting to turn this guy into more of a warrior. So I'm thinking, like, maybe buffing his defense and his health might not be a bad idea. But, I don't know. He's already got really good defense. I think maybe four J-Friends or Pest Control Squad would be better. Maybe that's something to think about between now and the next episode. So, I do need to wrap this one up here. So I'll go ahead and save it right where it's at. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to go over. I did want to mention real quick that uh, I, I do apologize. There's... Not really much, if any, Civ content coming this week. I did go home last weekend to spend some time with family and friends, and obviously I wasn't here recording, so um, I normally record Civ on Saturday, so that's why there's going to be a little bit of a gap there. But should be back on a relatively normal schedule coming next week, so just wanted to let you guys know if any of you are watching that one as well. Otherwise, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please leave your comments down below, and I'll see you in the next episode.